Thanks, Katie. Let me just start sharing my screen. Does that look okay? Yep. Great. All right. So as Katie said, today I want to talk to you about two uh, BITS projects that we've done in the domain of scholarly communication, namely our collaboration with the Journal of Development Economics on a pilot of the registered reports format and our preprint service called Meta Archive. So a bit of background info about myself. I'm a senior program associate at BITS and I work on institutionalizing transparency and reproducibility in journals and research institutions. My academic background is in law and public policy. So the first half of my talk is situated in kind of like the research design stage of the R2 roadmap, roadmap so pre-registration and pre-analysis plan, and a bit about um, the dissemination stage, and namely results blind review and register reports. And the second part of my talk, roughly 30%, uh, will discuss preprints and open access. So the common and primary motivation for both register reports and preprints is publication bias, or the fact that the published literature doesn't fully reflect the universe of results and is strongly skewed towards statistically significant, theoretically clean results. This is a, pap a paper that Ted went over in, in detail in his prior presentation, so I won't spend too much time on it. But the point that I want to emphasize here is the very real and potent impact of publication bias that is, is, is such, sends such a strong signal to researchers that no results aren't even written up. And in the context of, in, in, in the current context, for example, when we're dealing with um, resources which are getting scarcer and the gravity of, 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 of the situation of, of the current pandemic requires that we avoid any duplication or, or waste of effort, this is very, very worrisome. So both of the solutions, both of the projects that I, 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 I wanted to tell you about tackle this problem from a different angle, namely register reports, removes the nature of the results as a factor for publication, and then preprints remove uh, access barriers such as paywalls and provide a swift mode of publication. So, what are register reports? If you're not familiar, register reports are empirical research articles which are peer reviewed and accepted based on the merit of, of, their, of, of their research question and the quality of the research design before the results are known. So if you think of a, um, the, the, the peer review process, it, it's, it is split into two stages where at stage one, authors submit a proposal, which includes an introduction, methods, and data analysis plan. This then gets evaluated, and then um, if evaluated positively, the journal grants an in-principle acceptance to this paper, which essentially entails a promise by the journal to publish the late, later on resulting paper, regardless of the nature of its results. So after, with that in-principle acceptance in hand, the researcher collects and analyzes the data, writes up a paper, sends it back for another quick um, round of peer review, which um, here is intended to make sure that the, the implementation of the, paper, of, the, of the project aligns with the research design that was accepted at stage one. So it's such an intuitive idea that someone literally came up seemingly independently on Twitter with registered report just last week. So just to read this to you. Uh, journal decisions based on papers with description of research design and evidence for its validity, but otherwise no results. Then results are disclosed. Should eliminate a lot of fee hacking and rejection because results are inconvenient, obvious, or implausible. This is someone who was not aware of register reports before. Um, in the last seven years, since the register report format has, was first implemented at the journal, of, uh, journal Cortex in uh, neuroscience, um, there has been a rapid rise across the sciences. Currently, there are over 260 journals in the social and life sciences accepting articles in this format. One of these journals is the Journal of Development Economics. Um, we collaborated them on a pilot project which ran between March 2018 and November 2019. 
Um, 75 stage submissions have been received, 15 out of which have been accepted. Four stage two submissions have been received, two of, out of which have been accepted. So I wanna tell you about our role and some of the lessons learned uh, both uh, for um, science in general, but also for you as potentially as, as authors from this project. So we supported the pilot project by developing editorial resources, such as guidelines for authors, specifically intended for um, the registry reports track, or we also refer to, to it as pre-results review. That's a term that we'd like to push in for in economics. It's slightly more intuitive than registry reports. Um, we also developed frequently asked questions for authors and for reviewers to clarify, to further clarify and break down the main um, items included in the guidelines. And we also developed what we call a stage one submission template, which it contains a bunch of uh, uh, pointers and questions, which by answering authors can come up with a full stage one submission. So this is not the actual template, this is just a reporting checklist included within the template, but you can see there are some of the formatting requirements dictated by the journal. Um, there are questions about introduction, so um, making sure that the research question has, has merit, items about the research design, empirical analysis, et cetera. In addition, we, did, we helped the journal in uh, conducting outreach, and answering questions for, uh, from authors about how and, and when, where to submit. So I give you the top five most frequently asked questions for auth from, that we receive from authors at the JDE, since I imagine most of you are interested, potentially interested in something like this. So first of all, do register reports limit exploratory research? Um, Ted talked about this in, in and elaborated on this quite a bit. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but the basic idea is that no, you are free to report any analysis, even the ones that weren't pre-registered, as long as you've clearly labeled them. Um, distinguishing between confirmatory and exploratory research helps preserve the integrity of both without favoring one over the other. Also, at what point in data collection can I submit my stage one proposal? So in principle, uh, papers that have collected follow-up data, so essentially data that start to reveal the results of the, of the experiment are not eligible. Um, it's, it's, pre it's recommended to submit at least three months before any follow-up data is, is collected. So uh, in, in fact, baseline and um, uh, having collected baseline data is helpful for understanding the context and uh, conducting power analysis. Some of the most common reasons for rejection in register reports, interestingly, they sound similar to the reasons for rejection in regular um, con con conventional peer review. So for example, if the research question is not interesting or um, the research design is not laid out in sufficient detail, so all of these things may warrant a rejection. However, the key distinction between receiving a rejection in stage one with registered reports versus a conventional peer review, it comes at a time before you submit all the time and effort into uh, con conducting the, uh, the research project. Another question that we received was whether authors can submit to a different journal after being granted in principle acceptance at the JDE. Yes, a resounding yes, as long as you acknowledge that your work underwent peer review uh, with the JDE and it was accepted as part of the pre-results review process. And finally, how long does the preview process take? It's somewhat sh uh, shorter. It's at least stage one is somewhat shorter than conventional peer review. So it takes 66 days of, on, over, uh, on average currently um, for papers that were accepted is slightly longer. So it's 180 days. This accounts also for the time to take, uh, the time that, ta uh, that authors take to revise and resubmit their work. So some of the more, some of the, 
kind of like meta scientific um, lessons learned from the JD experience. First of all, register reports encourage well thought out experiments. So, um, talk, Ted talked about this pre analysis plans and pre registration uh, can facilitate ex ante conversation about planned research. And um, at this point, it's much more helpful to receive feedback because it, it is still possible to address it. And based on uh, feedback that we've received from, from authors, they have found it very helpful to uh, write, out, write out their ideas in uh, stage one register report because um, uh, especially if it's, if it's uh, intended to be reviewed by peers and, and may warrant them um, an acceptance. Some of the, some of the, the, the there are a bunch of uh, discipline specific features that we learned about uh, registered reports when implemented in development economics, which distinguishes from registered reports in other disciplines, such as the timeline of implementation. So most of the work that has been submitted so far uh, in, in, involves randomized control trials, field experiments, which sometimes take years to implement. So uh, we're working on uh, slightly longer timelines. Also, just because of the field nature of the work, um, authors, it, it is reasonable to expect that authors uh, may, and may encounter some objective challenges in implementing the registered reports, uh, the accepted pre-registered research design, and therefore, um, the way deviations are reported is a little bit some, somewhat more flexible than in other disciplines. However, um, authors are still required to report everything. And then finally, um, most of the work that has been submitted so far considered um, involved RCTs. However, as I said, talked about in this presentation, it is perfectly possible to. Um, also pre-register observational work, for example, longitudinal data before the release of the next stage or um, restricted access data before getting access to the data pre-registering the research design. And then finally, uh, kind of like a re research implementation lesson is that resources and templates are very helpful in facilitating adoption. So, the template that I referenced before was used pretty much by all submissions so far, and authors have um, said that they found it useful and helpful in making uh, their, their work uh, formatting and, and preparing their work for submission and in this track. So if you, are, if you have a project coming up, um, make sure to check out jd slash preresultsreview.org. So that is the website that contains all the materials uh, and also lists all the papers that have been accepted in this track so far. It also provides links to the, I believe, mo most of the accepted papers. So you can actually read what the stage one register reports should look like in development economics. And then if you operate in a different discipline, um, as I said, there are over 260 other journals across the disciplines which accept articles in this format. So check out cos.io slash rr, which lists all the journals and other disciplines that uh, accept work in this format. So onto the second part of my presentation, which is which deals with preprints. So preprints are open access manuscripts which submit which uh, are submitted to a preprint repository prior to peer review and journal publication. Uh, there's almost unlimited amount, uh, uh, un, 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 the possibilities of what can be posted as a preprint are unlimited. They're mostly used for working papers, but you can also post white papers, tutorials, dissertations, etc. Anything that can be fitted onto a PDF and posted on the internet can be posted as a preprint. There are plenty, there are many uh, preprint services out there, some uh, specializing in um, scientific disciplines such as law archive or meta archive, 
other with a bit more regional focus, such as India Archive or Africa Archive. And all of them are united by the benefits that they provide. So as I said, there are no financial barriers to publication. So it is free to both post and read preprints, which is uh, a very welcome development, considering that journal publications are very expensive to both publish, but then also access due to paywalls. They provide a mode of swift publication, an opportunity to get early feedback. I'm sure many of you have been aware of the um, discussions on, on Twitter of, of early work that has resolved, re revolved around preprints posted related to uh, on, on dealing with COVID-19 related research. Um, preprints are also citable and searchable. So most of the preprint services issue DOIs or digital object identifiers, which provide permanent or stable way to locate your work. Um, posting early, posting your work early makes, uh, helps increase its visibility and potentially grant you more citations. So post early and post often. And then finally, preprints provide an opportunity to grant, to, to publish your work irrespective of the nature of the results. So if you're dealing, if you're, if you're doing work on research transparency and reproducibility or uh, meta-analysis, uh, BITS runs its own preprint services called the Meta Archive. And it's like, you, you, can, you can access it on metaarchive.org. If you're interested in submitting your work, there, we have a somewhat light touch review process. So we just ask whether it's relevant. So does it fall within the topical scope of transparency, reproducibility, and meta-analysis? It is scholarly, so as long as it's not ideological in nature, it, it is a good fit. And then whether your name as an, as an author and a, a sub submitter are a match. Since recently, we have also teamed up with a group called the Peer Community in Meta Research. Uh, and through the PCI, Meta Research Community, you are able to submit your preprints and pre registrations for peer review before, uh, after, uh, be, before submitting them to a, a journal. So the way this operates is you can submit your preprint. Um, it is again, it is handled by um, an editor and you can receive feedback from uh, peers who are skilled and, and experienced in meta scientific research. The, 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 the process may, end, may result in a recommendation, which is sort of a formal letter that you can include with your paper when you submit it to a journal and it may be helpful in um, securing a publication. So if you are convinced, uh, check out metaarchive.org and click this green button and submit your work. So in conclusion, if you have any prospective projects and you would like to get useful feedback on and you would like, or potentially a journal acceptance, submit it, sub submit them as register reports, but then also, if you want to get feedback and share your work early, use some of the many, many different preprint services. So let me delve into some of the questions that I, and I think we're very short on time. So maybe we can just do four or five. Yeah, Alex, we can we can keep going until 1130 if um, okay. you're okay with that. And if people need to leave before, then um, feel free to, but we'll we'll keep the room open for a few more minutes. Okay. Um, Maria asks, does publishing a preprint invalidate your submission from some journals? Um, yes. So you should consult the journal's policy on this before sharing it as a preprint. I think Katie posted Sherpa, Sherpa Romeo, which is a great resource to consult before uh, submitting your, your, your preprint. Though in principle, I think it, 
it's self archiving so it, most of the time it is um, it, it it is a possibility that you should consider thanks okay Taman Bag uh, as I have a current methodology and I'm currently considering publishing it as either a preprint or in a methodology journal. Can I have a suggestion of a few journals that publish methodology or cross-sectional study? So you can start off by posting your, your work uh, on Meta Archive. And I said, as I said, um, the PCI Meta Research com uh, Community Peer Review is, is a great way to get some, some feedback. And you might they might actually also be able to point you to a good journal that could publish uh, that would be a good fit for your work okay moving up uh, Raquel asked what is the proportion of register reports which come from observational studies do you think observational studies are not suitable for register reports I'm not familiar with I haven't reviewed obviously all of the papers that have been submitted to the JDE but I, I don't remember seeing an observational uh, project posted there and Ted you may have you, you may be more familiar with with uh, the universe of, of register reports that have been submitted but and correct me if I'm wrong but it is perfectly possible to submit as a register report an observational study and Tomorrow in, in the talk with Cecilia, in Cecilia's presentation, you will, you will learn about some of the potential scenarios that you can pull off as a register for pre-register and submit as a register report. Yeah, I've certainly heard of colleagues say they want to submit mm -hmm. observational development research to JDE, but I don't know if they have yet, but it's certainly possible and I know that the editors Andy and Dean are open to it. So. Yeah. 